Minister Navin Disanake, thank you for joining us here at the Berlin Economic Forum. We're honoured to have you. And we'd like to ask you a few questions and we're to hear your thoughts on some opinions on some salient issues. So today we're here to discuss Sri Lankan tourism and sustainable development. What are the key components of the Ministry for Tourism strategy to promote Sri Lankan sustainable development? And with sustainable development in mind, what are the short, medium and long term goals of the Minister for, Ministry for Tourism? Thank you for having me here today. I'm very much uh, honoured and privileged to be in your institute. Uh, well, sustainable development, I think, is a key component of our strategy for uh, tourism development as well. As you know, the idea of sustainability is very important uh, in the development context because uh, over the years, you know, the last uh, 50, 60 years, uh, there has been a very uh, kind of greed-developed, greed-oriented development that is driven by the profit motive. Uh, and this has caused havoc in, in, in nature and in also among societies because you, f you find that enrichment happens only to a few. So I think sustainable development encompasses a large uh, macro picture of uh, where a nation's economy should be. So as far as Sri Lanka is concerned, we have been very uh, forthright in our policies that we have to protect our environment. We have to make sure that communities are actually benefited by development. And the word sustainable also means that it is a long-term strategy, mm -hmm. in, encompassing the, the, the nature, encompassing societies, uh, encompassing a, a macro picture of where you want uh, the society should be. So who decides on this? I, I think really the policymakers with the participation of the people. So when you talk about sustainable development, we are talking about green development. Mm -hmm. We are talking about uh, uh, biodiversity, protecting the biodiversity of a country, uh, enriching uh, the biodiversity, the sustainable tourism, green tourism, and ecotourism, and also adventure tourism. So I feel that uh, these are key concepts, and I feel the younger generation uh, will uh, encourage and actually participate uh, mm -hmm. in, in countries and policies that actually promote sustainable tourism. So we in Sri Lanka, from the Tourism Ministry, uh, we are here at the ITB to 2015 to promote these ideas and uh, we have been uh, very encouraged by the response that we have. We have uh, several large uh, investors and also Sri Lankan um, entities that promote sustainable tourism and a lot of uh, German tourists are very keen on the idea as well. So we, we, will, we will definitely see a concept where if a country promotes sustainable uh, tourism, green tourism and, and eco-tourism and protecting the nature and the communities that participate in it, then therefore you will also see a return in terms of higher mm -hmm. tourist numbers. Yeah, I completely agree. I've seen that uh, Germans are very, very yes. impressed with the, yes. the green and eco-tourism. Yes. It's something that's really yes. increasing in popularity. Yes. Yes. Um, so we're here at the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy. For you, how would you define cultural diplomacy? And do you think there's a significance for cultural diplomacy with nation branding? And maybe give some examples. Like, is Sri Lanka using cultural diplomacy as a tool for nation branding? Yes. Well, the thing is, when when you talk about cultural diplomacy, uh, uh, Sri Lanka and Germany have, even before the establishment of dis diplomatic relations. Uh, we've had uh, interaction of cultures. Mm -hmm. so, so although the word diplomacy was not there, the interaction of cultures happened. Yeah. And that itself is a byproduct of, uh, of, of diplomacy. So, so I would say in terms of Buddhist scholarly writings, uh, mm -hmm. the idea of Buddhism and uh, how, how Sri Lanka is a, is a major country for Theravada, pure Buddhism, uh, uh, German scholars have contributed largely towards the spread of Buddhism in the West. So that itself, in the modern context, is cultural diplomacy. Then, of course, as I came in, I saw the, our Sri Lankan dancers here. Yeah. Uh, so that is cultural diplomacy. Then, uh, in Sri Lanka, from the Gotha Institute, we've been having from uh, 1948, a uh, very long-standing bilateral relationship mm -hmm. where German culture, the German songs, German dance, ge the German language, now uh, is promoted in a very, very significant way among the Sri, Sri Lankan population. So uh, in that sense, uh, I think uh, there is cultural diplomacy which binds uh, two races and two nations together. And I feel uh, if the cultural diplomacy is strong, uh, the other aspects also fall into, fall into line. So, so Germany has been very uh, forthright in its uh, 
uh, development activities in Sri Lanka, apart from the economic uh, sphere of activity, Germany has contributed immensely uh, for the cultural uh, aspects of the two countries to strengthen as well. That's great to hear that there's such strong relations between the two countries. It's always nice. Um, so I know that Sri Lanka is very lucky. You've got very quite a youthful population. I think it's 25 percent of mm -hmm. under 15. In terms of youth education and advance advancement, what can be done to educate the youth of today in sustainable tourism? And in what ways are you encouraging youth involvement and participating participation not only in sustainable development but Sri Lankan society as a whole? Yeah. Good question. I feel the youth of the modern world are really linked together by uh, so many factors. Uh, certainly, uh, the, par our, our, the parents of our generation did not have that uh, cultural kind of aspect where the borders, the physical borders do not matter. Mm -hmm. what, what matters is actually the ideas. So, so you find that even in Germany, uh, you know, through social media, through Twitter, through Facebook, uh, young, the younger generation in all countries want the same thing mm -hmm. and in that way there are very uh, common agendas like accountability, uh, good governance, democracy, uh, the, the right for a fair, just uh, and equitable system uh, where, where hard work is rewarded, where there is uh, certainly of, certainly of uh, the idea of pluralism and tolerance in a society. Mm -hmm. So all, this, all these ideas are, are for the younger generation and they are coming from us. So, so I feel in that sense, uh, Sri Lanka, the younger generation of Sri Lanka, just like your generation here, just like the Anglo-Saxon generation or the, the African generation in the African continent, we share the same values. So when you, call, when you talk about sustainable development, uh, the Sri Lankan youth also are demanding that the politicians and the policy makers, they have a sustainable approach uh, because ultimately it's their children who mm -hmm. are going to reap the benefits of that. So if you don't follow an ethical policy or, towards sustainable development, then uh, actually we are playing, uh, we are damaging the future of the mm -hmm. younger generation and, and they, are not, they are going to be very cross with us if, if they do that. So I, I think it's, it's a global phenomenon that, that has to be encouraged, understood and supported by the policy makers. Mm, yeah, I, I yeah. agree wholeheartedly. It's definitely good to, to have an eye on the future. And then just lastly, what do you think, what sort of cultural and economic, economic practices does Sri Lanka have that could serve as an example for other countries? Mm. Uh, cultural and economic practices? Yeah, or even something, maybe nation banding, these, these sorts of things. Yeah, well, I, I, think, I think the idea of multiculturalism is mm -hmm. very important. Uh, I think, you know, if you walk around in any developed Western society, you, you have the idea of multiculturalism now. Yeah. And, and Sri Lanka also is a country which, which promotes that. Uh, we, have, we have a very strong uh, uh, dominant uh, Sinhala, what we call a majority. Uh, we have a Tamil uh, community, we have a Muslim community. So I, I think the interaction of uh, these communities only promotes, sustains and strengthens uh, each other. So, so I think uh, if, you, if you call America a melting pot of, of cultures, uh, that is just one example. But also I think uh, the younger generation of Sri Lankans, uh, they, they, they feel akin to understand each other. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel that is a good example where Sri Lanka can learn and others can learn from Sri Lanka as well. So, so we've had a very long conflict uh, in Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. again because of intolerance and not, not understanding each other. But I feel that there, there are models that we can look at, uh, the resolution, the so-called uh, the conflict resolution models mm -hmm. that are there in the world. So they are, they are, they are they, you can study them and understand them, but, but of course each culture is unique, and each society is unique. So therefore you have to uh, encompass and embrace other conflict models, but also fit it to the local model as well. Yeah. I completely understand. Yes. Coming from Northern Ireland, I yes. know how much course, tolerance you course, need in the, in the issues of conflict. Of course. But thank you so much for joining us here today. It was an honour and a privilege. And thank you. Yeah, thank you.